Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and I wanted to talk about a certain YouTuber, the immortal one as they might say, who of course has been going through a lot of controversy lately, and it's just really sad to see what's happened. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, I'm referring to someone that is part of the Metal Jesus Rocks crew. And if you're familiar with that stuff, you probably already know who I'm talking about. But anyways, uh, there was a couple of YouTubers that I know, uh, D-Dave and Smash JT, that both had made videos that were critical of some of his practices, most notably his museum. Which, interestingly enough, we'll get back to that in a second. But what he did, as opposed to claiming that the videos were maybe harassment or bullying him or something like that, which... If you think somebody is not just being critical, but is actively trying to harm you in some way, like physically, mentally, whatever, you would flag those videos as such, and YouTube would review them and so on, and see if those uh, videos violated community guidelines. And that's what he should have done if he thought that those were appropriate, but what he did instead was he actually used the copyright claim system to get those videos removed and put strikes on their channels merely for the fact that they used his face in the thumbnail of their videos. Which, obviously, you know, when it comes to that kind of thing, I know a lot of people have disagreements over that, but that really is not something that would register as a copyright infringement. Um, certainly not alone. Maybe if they use footage of his and didn't do so in a transformative way, then, yeah, it probably would be a copyright problem. But the thing is, he admitted to the fact that he used this false system uh, to get their videos pulled, which is against YouTube's terms of service, by the way. And he made this video, which really was a very poor apology of it. The thing is, I've been on his side for pretty much the whole time. You know, I've been a fan of John Hancock for a while. And just seeing the way he's handled things, it's changed my mind on that, unfortunately. Because he's a very knowledgeable dude. He seemed very humble, very nice. Um, it seemed like this whole museum thing, he actually wanted to do everything in his power to make it happen. But I'm not convinced of that anymore. And that's because John never really had a plan for the museum. Now, that could be, of course, naivety involved with that, because maybe he doesn't understand everything that is needed for that. He says he's got other people he's working with on this, but he doesn't name them or anything like that. You'd figure someone like Kelsey, who's part of the Video Game History Foundation, could give him a hand on that, and he would mention her if she was helping him with that, but it's not the case. I really don't know what his plan is. It seemed like his plan is to get all these video games, and then what? <laughs> you know, then what is the plan after that? Um, he doesn't talk about anything like location, uh, legal, pro you know, re legal proceedings for it. He, you know, he talks a little bit about setting up a nonprofit foundation for it, but he doesn't really go into any real details or anything like that. He's been planning this whole museum thing for over eight years, from what I understand. That's just what we know of. Maybe it could have been even longer. And it seems like there's been no progress at all with this, which is just insane. You know, you figure something like this does take a long time, but we would have some kind of progress, some kind of information about this. So I offered a comment on his video, and, you know, I was pretty pretty softball on this comment I would say I'll go ahead and post it as a pinned comment on this video you let me know what you think about that but I discovered something very interesting see the reason why I don't believe John anymore is because he is actively trying to censor any mention even of the museum this was something that I noticed whenever I posted my comment and like, like I said, it was a very softball thing. It wasn't really critical. It was just offering advice pretty much, um, for the most part at least. I would say I did criticize him a bit over using the copyright system to strike Smash JT and D-Dave. But even that was not really very harsh 
uh, because, like I said, I, I always thought he was a humble guy that just didn't really understand the ramifications of what he did um, quite as much and starting to learn from his mistakes and whatnot, you know. But here's the thing. The dude is, you know, he's getting... I don't know if he's in his 40s or 50s or what, but he's an older dude for sure. You know, he should have an understanding of how the world works when you take these kinds of actions, especially since he's been on YouTube for a long time as well. Surely he has heard about these kinds of things, about people having their channels pulled because of false copyright claims, takedowns, and things like that. But it didn't occur to him. It didn't occur to him that that would have been a problem. And that's that's a real shame. You know, it really is. And uh, I, I really don't know what's going on. But just as an experiment, I took an alternate account. And I just posted this single comment. Looking forward to the museum. And then I switched right back to my regular account. Sort of the comments by newest first. Wasn't there. My theory on that is he has actually censored the word museum in his comments. So even people that may just be interested in the museum, looking forward to it, not really criticizing it at all, your comment will not appear on his channel. I dare you, give it a try. Any of his videos, just post whatever kind of comment. Make sure to use the word museum, M-U-S-E-U-M. It will not appear if you look on another account or if you sign out of your account and just look through there without a, you know, sign in. So that is very troublesome because he had promised to be better about criticism and to just, you know, grit and bear it more, um, let it be. But clearly that's not the case. He needs to fix that. Oh, and not to mention he monetized his apology video too. Very classy, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that's something you should never do. That's a cardinal sin on YouTube, guys. You know, doing um, monetization on things like apology videos or videos about people, you know, dying or things like that. You know, that's just something you never do. I understand that he probably has things automated, but you can turn that off. You can turn that off on an individual video basis, and people should really learn from it. So, it's really a, it's really a shame because, I mean, I like everybody else in the Middle Jesus crew, you know. I watch John Riggs' videos regularly. I like MJR's videos. He does a lot of good work on them. Sometimes I'll watch, like, Kelsey or Kenzie. Uh, Reggie, of course, I watch some of his stuff. But John's out of the picture for me now. I really don't have any interest in him anymore. And it'll be interesting to see what will happen with the whole MJR dynamic. Because if they want to defend him on this, it could hurt their channels in the process so it'll be interesting to see what they'll do as far as that you know i don't i don't think it'd be very wise to i think the best move probably for them is to just step back and just not really talk about it you know unless they're forced to and you know like just kind of keep distance from it that's probably the best thing that they could do um, because like I said, it can really hurt their channels and their brands if they, uh, want to actively defend and white knight for them. You know, I wish the best for John, but I, I don't know, man, you really let us down. You really let a lot of us down and that's a sad shame. So that's all I got time for guys down Phoenix out.